thing. Fine. Okay, let's try it. Scramble. Carrington, the uh, SBO said you wanted to talk to me. I'm Pat Grant, the escape officer. Bad luck. You've had a rough stretch of solitary. Never mind that now. Well, you feel odd for a while. Take you a few days just to adjust physically to other people being around. Ask get all the exercise you can. Look, I'm not asking you for medical advice. I want to talk to you about escaping. works. Yeah. Magic. So you will put my plan to the escape committee? All right. When? How long before I get an answer? Well, it's uh, April the 2nd now. I should be able to get back to you by beginning of June. June? Look, there's quite a waiting list. At the moment, there are 17 separate plans waiting to be considered and discussed with other nationals, so there's no duplication. No one fouling anyone else up. I can't wait until June. I know, I know. It's a natural reaction to solitary confinement. It's got nothing to do with solitary Quiet. confinement. I'm sorry. I'm wanted in the yard. We'll have another talk in a week. I'll try and get you on the list somewhere. You should be out of here within six months with luck. A lot of luck and careful planning. said that 10 minutes ago. I said 13 minutes, 10 minutes ago. Come here! Funny how slowly time passes when you're waiting for something. Yeah, well, it depends what you're waiting for. What do you mean? When my wife and I were married, I just got out of training school. I was waiting to be posted to a squadron. What about that? I was just thinking how quickly the time passed then. That's all. You should try not to think about it so much. I know. I can't help it. It's just that looking back, but we don't seem to have any time together at all. Thank God I'm not married. I'm sorry. I told you yesterday, you've got to be patient. I know what you told me yesterday, and now I'm going to tell you something. What do you mean, hands? My back, rubbish! Oh, come on, Dick. One minute's not going to make that much difference, one way or the other. Do you want to wind up in Sardinia? Come on, Tim. No. Come on, get it from the city. All right, have a go. I'm with you. Come over. No. Get out of the sun, will you? Go ahead and play. Oh, for God's sake, Yank. Keep it still. Black. Put in hands. I'm back, rubbish. Thanks for your help, Yank. My name's Carrington, Limey. Call me a limey. 
See that punching bag there? Why don't you go and hit it? Hit it as hard as you can. We all get like this sometimes. Another tactical British withdrawal. Point seven. We're going to need at least another week's readings before we can begin to make accurate tables. Over there, over there. Not again, Simon. That's enough. That's enough. Simon. Come on, pack it in, Simon. It'll we'll be over when it's over. Over there. I hope I didn't sing anything to offend you. Oh, I don't blame you. I feel the same. At least I've got a country I can go home to one day without the Germans there ahead of me. Years since I saw a Would German in England. Would you mind explaining that? Maybe you haven't heard. The British Army's bogged down in Greece. There's going to be another Dunkirk. Only this time the Germans are ready to cross the channel. Where did you get that from? I was on the run for a couple of months before I got caught and sent here. Well, Hitler's given up the idea of invading England. It's too late. I remember them saying that about France. Uh, wasn't it your Mr. Chamberlain who said, uh, quote, Hitler's missed the bus, unquote? And then uh, six weeks later, the Germans were in Paris. You remember that? That's no comparison. The uh, French were all divided against themselves. No politics, please. War is only an extension of politics. When you abandon Czechoslovakia for political reasons, that was your last chance to win the war. I grant you at the moment, Carrington, it's pretty difficult to see how we're going to win this war. But we'll never lose it. Here, yeah, you yeah. said it. I'll give you six months after the fall of Greece. I thought we might liberate the occupied countries first, before we give in. Yeah, that's an idea. That's a very good idea. Why don't you uh, liberate India? There's an occupied country. Liberate India. Now, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll swap India for Hawaii and the Philippines. <laughs> and Lana Turner. And Joan Bennett. And Thank Deanna you. Durbin. Deanna Durbin's Canadian. I do wish you'd stop talking about women. Can you yeah. think of a better subject? Yeah. 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 Gentlemen talks about women behind their backs. Certainly not. Why do you think it's funny? You don't, do you? You're serious. Do you really think we're beaten? Yes, I do. Then why did you join the RAF? To observe. But you're a pilot. To observe what's going on. It's a pity you didn't join the Luftwaffe. I might have done that if I'd have been in Berlin instead of London at the time. That doesn't mean that I want the Nazis to win. One of your English writers said, uh, I am a camera. Cameras don't take sides. If I hadn't been shot down, I might have been one of the few Americans to record the decline and fall of the British Empire at first hand. Is that what that's all about? More or less. Do you think he meant all that? Yes, he meant it all right. What do we know about him? Well, anyone could say they were American. Carrington's an American, all right. Really? How do you know? Jimmy Corbett knew him in Spain. Yeah. Which side was he on? Back oh, right. He was a journalist. Yeah. For, For the, the Berliner Zeitung. We'll keep an eye on him. Shine, damn you, shine. The German Ministry of Propaganda ensures us a warm, dry spring. Yeah, but it's the third day in a row. And we've got to get one more reading this week. There'll be plenty of sun on the Met at this time of year, anyway. What's it like there in peacetime? Dress whites and cocktails. The French used to make a big fuss of us. It was rather chic to have a British naval officer at their parties. That's why I met these friends at Saint Tropez. We used to go sailing. 
My wife and I were planning to go to Cannes on our honeymoon. I've been thinking. I had a week's leave. It's about time we went over our whole scheme again with Pat, so he can put it up to the other Allied escape officers. Oh. No carcass today? Pick it up! Not quite the weather for it. Why are you so interested? I have a theory that the British suffer from arrested development. That's why. Yeah, we have a theory about you, too. On, Simon. Let him finish. Well, it won't be the first time the Germans had planted a stooge. Oh, Simon, steady! Steady! Oh, steady, Simon! Come on! Are officers allowed to fight among themselves in the Royal Air Force? No, sir. Nor in the Wehrmacht. It is also against the rules and call it. The penalty for disturbing the peace, as you English put it, is seven days solitary confinement. Dismissed. You provoked the assault. You went right up to Flight Lieutenant Carter and hit him for no reason. I had a reason. It seemed like a pretty good way of getting 15 days in a cell. Please, no joking. No, it would suit me fine. Besides, it would give me time to finish. Finish what? I want permission to speak to the Commandant. Why do you wish to be sent to solitary confinement? I'm writing a book. I want privacy. Time to finish it. You'll have plenty of time in college, Lieutenant. Perhaps years. Not for this one. My publisher in the United States wants it as soon as possible. All written material addressed to the United States must be mm, submitted to the Central Bureau of Censorship in Berlin. They'll pass it. What is the subject of the book? Germany. Germany and the war. You must have seen a great deal of the country in the... Uh, how many days was it before you were recaptured and sent here? 63. In nine weeks, you became such an expert on Germany that you decided to write a book? You will also see that I was a foreign correspondent for the United Press in Spain that I worked for the Herald Tribune in France, Holland, and Denmark, that I covered the Blitz in London. I've seen a good deal of the Germans during this war. From the Allied side? The losing side. Leave us. Stand easy. Why are you in such a hurry to finish the book? Roosevelt has already repealed the Neutrality Act. I would imagine that he's going to push Lend-Lease through Congress. As a German army officer and no doubt a student of the last World War, what would you think his next move would be? Germany has no quarrel with the United States government. There is no reason why our two countries should go to war. I think that too. I believe that. Roosevelt's been able to do what he wants because he's had public opinion behind him. And you think one book will change it? No, I don't. But I think it'll at least show the other side of the argument. Germany's been getting some pretty bad press in the United States lately. We're not going anywhere near Switzerland. And Switzerland's too obvious. Everybody heads for the Swiss border. It's the closest. Not much closer than France. Well, we've got some good contacts in France. The escape route into Spain's pretty well organized. No, 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 no. Spain's out. We're going for a little sea voyage. Now, you've done that before, Dick. The whole coast of France occupied, it's next to impossible to get any kind of boat. I've got some friends in Central Tropez. They've got a 14-foot yacht. What he means is that they won't mind our stealing it. It's only a week's voyage to Malta. Now, what about instruments? You need more than a compass to steer a course. Go on, show him. 
sextant. The length of the shortest shadow gives you the angle of the sun at midday, right? Mm -hmm. We made a complete set of latitude tables. All you have to do is to measure the length of the shadow anywhere and then check it with Greenwich time. We got our latitude and longitude right by a couple of miles anyway. Well, I suppose the Navy knows what it's doing. I'll check the whole scheme out with our friends in case there's any conflict. Nice little nook you've got here. Cozy. Marvellous what friends in the right place can do for you. Which of them do you fancy most? Heidrich, Himmler, S, or Hitler? Bergman, finish up and get out of you. I don't know with the Nazis much myself, but then I'm prejudiced, of course, being Jewish. Member of an inferior race. Like Spinoza. Freud and Einstein. Not to mention Jesus of Nazareth. All those other subhumans. In my personal opinion... Bergman. Oh, I'm sorry if I've said anything at all to offend Bergman. you, Aryan. Get on with your work and let me get on with mine. Yes. Am I breathing too heavily for you? People have to breathe, don't they? Never mind the bed. Leave it. Your permission to speak, sir. What is it? Message to Lieutenant Carrington from Captain Grant, sir. Go on. Hitler's invaded Yugoslavia now. I know that. Oh, of course. Your friends would have told you, wouldn't they? Captain Grant wanted to know if that had made any difference, the German army moving into Yugoslavia. But I can see it hasn't. No, it hasn't. And you can tell Captain Grant that. Oh. Right. Heil Hitler. They've left the commandant's office. Scramble! They're not coming this way. Oh. Maybe they're searching the Polish quarters first. I don't think they've come here to snoop at all, as far as I can see. I think the Rosers just want to have a bit of cheese and chalk with the Yank. Well, for God's sake, speak English, can't you, Bergman? It looks like the Gestapo are just coming here to see Lieutenant Carrington. Philip Reinhardt Carrington. My mother was German. Yes. Yes, she was born in Cologne. She was also a member of the Illinois delegation to the Democratic Convention in 1931. A lot of people were for Roosevelt in those days. Yes, including you. You were secretary of the Students for FDR at Michigan State University. You found out a lot about me? Yes. How many Germans voted for Hitler during the last Reichstag elections? Did you? Well, the elected Chancellor von Papen was already 
secretly a member of the Nazi party. Every German who voted for von Papen knew that. Roosevelt promised to keep us out of foreign wars. You didn't keep out of them yourself. You were in Madrid in 1936. Yes, I was working for an American newspaper there, the Herald Tribune. Yes. The Spanish Republican government stands for democracy everywhere. To support it is to help stop Hitler now. You know who read that, of course. Yes, I did. Would you like to have me quote you on Goebbels, on Mussolini, before the Rome-Berlin pact? <laughs> Are you um, trying to convince us you've had a sudden change of mind? Did Hitler have a change of mind about Stalin? After he signed the non-aggression treaty with him? That is completely irrelevant. All I'm trying to do is to convince you that I'm a realist, a pragmatist, that's all. Hitler decided he couldn't risk fighting Russia. I don't think the United States can risk fighting Germany. That's all I'm trying to say. And is that what you're going to say in your book? I've said it already, loud and clear, in the first few chapters. Why don't you read it? Hmm? Yes, thank you. We will. Yes, the Ministry of Propaganda will read every word of it with great interest. And then the Ministry of Propaganda will pass it along to us at Gestapo headquarters for our opinion. British officers and Herr Philip Carrington. Twelve. Eleven of us, one of yours, that makes twelve. The Minister has asked me to encourage you in every way I can to finish your book. Yes, yes. The Ministry of Propaganda is most enthusiastic about the first two chapters of your manuscript. And so am I. You'll be given every opportunity to arrange for its publication in the United States. How does the Gestapo feel about it? You have our permission to continue with your work. No, no. Uh, sit down, Lieutenant. I found it very interesting, your analysis of power situation. There's nothing particularly new about that. Uh, Darwin's theory uh, was... Yes, Darwin, but uh, he didn't apply his idea to politics. For an American liberal... Disillusioned liberal. Uh, for an American with your background, you have an unusual contempt for human intelligence. The human species, like any other, have to just to the existing surroundings. Yes. Here in code it's too. Some of you adapt to the idea of remaining prisoners, and some of you don't. All anyone needs is a sense of purpose, something to do. So you've adapted to code it. As long as I can get my work done. It might be possible to arrange a different environment for you. Yes. We were considering some other form of internment. House arrest. Perhaps a hotel room in Berlin. There are other writers there. There are French and English. Yes, I know that. You prefer to stay here? Well, what I'm thinking is that um, if I were to get special treatment from what the Americans call the Gestapo, they might think that I've been bribed. Every word that I wrote would be suspect. And no one could say that if I remained a prisoner of war here in Kolditz.
Last year, in Baden-Baden, the snow was this high. Get back! Ah! Notice the yellow tubular and hermaphrodite florets of the disc, peculiar to the species Bellis peneris, commonly known as a date. Quiet and do as you're told. Or I'll break your neck. Eleven! Where is the twelve? Only supposed to be eleven British officers. And your man. I say your man seems to be missing. What man? You know, Herr Carrington, the Commandant's friend. Maybe the Commandant told Herr Carrington he was excused at hell. This is not Carrington's. The American did not go out to exercise this afternoon, sir. He was working in his cell all afternoon. At least Lord Haw-Haw never pretended to be on our side. He had the decency to get out of the country before the war even started. Yes. It's not like joining up and then supporting the enemy. They'll hang him when it's over. Hang Lord Haw-Haw? Aren't you ever going to move? They ought to stuff him, Try that. put him in Madame Tussauds. Why shouldn't we? It's treason. They made out the warrant the minute he started his broadcasts telling us to give up. I suppose he'd have got off it if he'd been uh, American. You stop being an American when you join the British Armed Forces. Legally, anyway. <laughs>
At ease. Please keep to your bunks, gentlemen. I do not wish to disturb you. I just want a few words with Lieutenant Carrington. Please get up, Lieutenant. Take him to his quarters. Doesn't seem to be any serious damage. Very little bruising. It's hard to tell with a skull. Emergency up -up. Looks like someone made it over the wall. Can you stand? You are excused all appeals until further notice. As the commandant's orders. Oh, you are a lucky fellow. I wish it was me. All right, if I just finish up with him first before I join the appel. I don't think there's any need for a bandage. It's not much more than a cut, really. What were you hit with? I don't know. I don't seem to have been there when it happened. Well, I'll take another look at it tomorrow morning. Get as much sleep as you can. Still in it for months, I know every thread of it. But Jerry's on to a scramble. Why change the bag? They probably ripped it open. When they found Dick's duffel coat, they thought they'd see if we'd try the same trick again. Well, at least Dick got away. News of Dick. Oh? Lieutenant Player. Player? Player? Did he get clear? I don't know him. Okay, Bergman, forget it. I expected to find you in a more cheerful mood this morning. have pulled out of Greece. Rommel's doing well, too. You're so interested in Lieutenant Player. Don't you want to hear how your side's getting on? Get up, Bergman. Get out.
spend the next couple of months in a cell. Steady, Simon. Steady, Simon. How about a nice game of chess? A long game, and we've got plenty of time. We've got years and years. Easy, old man. We could brush up on our Spanish. We'll take up the French horn. You know what we should have done, Dick and I? We should have gone on making those azimuth tables. Measuring the length of shadows at noon. Waiting for the sun to come out. Cursing the days that it rained. We should have made thousands of thousands of navigation tables. At least when we were doing that, we had something to do. We had some bloody reason for being alive. All right, you'll get another go. It was bad luck this time. That's all. Perhaps it was. Perhaps it wasn't. Well, it could have been just his bad luck. Jerry's picking him up. Could be they knew where to look. He was always hanging around, listening. Don't you think we ought to give him a chance to defend himself? A sort of court martial? All right. All right, we'll give him a chance. After I fell tonight. The SPO wants to see you. Now. He asked us what we were doing. And did you tell him? No. We knew we were making some sort of calculations. I mean, I had a protractor. Dick was drawing triangles. He'd seen us in the exercise yard. Anybody could guess what we were up to. I didn't guess what you were up to, Simon. Did you know? Carrington. Stand up. Did you know? Know what? Player was planning to get to France and reach the Mediterranean. I knew he was planning something. I see. Everybody's planning something. And after Dick escaped, you were excused all further appelled. So what? Did you see the Commandant that night? No, I don't think so. You've been on special rations for weeks now, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I get truffles three times a day. Ever since you had a private talk with the Commandant? I've had dozens of talks with the Commandant. The day you and Simon had a fight. Oh, come on. We all know why Phil's been getting special oh, treatment. Phil, why are you do... standing up for him? It's not a question of standing up for anybody. There's no evidence at all that Carrington... He deserves a damn good hiding, anyway. Make him run the gauntlet. Now, wait a minute. Stay out of it. Jim. All right, let's take a vote on it. But there's no evidence... Not not to to favor. Favor. Let's vote. All those in favor... Move. Right, squad. Simon. Gestapo. Come to congratulate Carrington. I'm finishing his book. What do you say now? I just hope you're right, that's all. Sit down, Lieutenant. Now, 
Oh, thanks. Have read your manuscript? You spent enough time on it. Well, we had several uh, th typewritten copies made. I was hoping it'd be off to the publisher by now. I felt it deserved careful study by all our departments before sending it to America. I thought you had the authority to send it on yourself. Yes. But the things, the questions that puzzled me about the manuscript. Well, maybe I can answer some of them for you. Yes. This letter attached to the manuscript. Oh, that's a letter to my publisher. Alexander Cole. He's an old school friend of yours, I see. Yes, uh, he is. He also published my last book. Yes, the one about Spain. It puzzled me, this letter. Dear Sandy. Well, uh, that's a contraction for Alexander. Yes. You will probably be surprised by my book. I know that most of it is contrary to your own opinion. I'm just guessing. Yes. Knowing your friend's political views in the past. I know it goes against majority opinion in the United States. You know that too. Yes. But I hope you will understand that the truth of what I'm trying to say, particularly in chapter four, lies in the fact that the multiple always adds up to the original factor as they taught us in high school. The multiple always adds up to the original factor. That's a curious phrase. Yes, that could be a little obscure to a German. Uh, what that is, is it's um, jargon used in American civics classes. But what does it mean? Well, my interpretation was that the lowest common denominator of public opinion is always, uh, always uh, the loudest and most representative. Yes, that's what I thought, too. For time, and then one of our other departments suggested an altogether different interpretation. Well, I can change that phrase mm. if it bothers you. No, 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 no. The whole book would be meaningless without it. What are twice nine? What? What are twice nine? Yes, three times nine. Five times nine. Seven times nine. Now, something very curious about those figures. If you add one and eight, two and seven, four and five, six and three. Yes, thank you. The multiple always adds up to the original factor. Always, but only with the figure nine. That's fascinating. I never took mathematics. Yes, you did at high school with your friend, Sandy. What's that got to do with my book? Will you please read that first sentence from chapter four? Please. However chivalrous it may seem, flooding unending American arms into England won't yes, stop any Yes, that's it, that's it, that's, that's enough. Let's look at every night's letter. H. I. T, L, E, R, Hitler, thank you. Now let's read on, taking every ninth letter in the manuscript. Hitler, in spite of objections, General Staff Wehrmacht has already issued Directive 
number 24. You know what direct life number 24 is? Yes. It's all here. In the same code in your manuscript. The invasion of Yugoslavia has not changed Hitler's plans, although it may have postponed them. The concentration of German troops in Romania and Poland is for Barbarossa, Hitler's code name for an attack on Russia this year. I know what directive number 24 is. Did you? I tried to warn a friend of mine in America. No, you hope to warn the American government and through them the Russians. Where did you get your information? I was a journalist. Yes, where did you, where did you get your information? Around. Who from? Just around. Who from? Everybody in Germany knows what directive number 24 is. Who from? message through to me. It was a damn good try, Yank. Thanks. <laughs> 